Okay, joining us today on the 2021 Virtual All Native Basketball Dialogues is Adelia Paul. Uh, welcome, Adelia. Adelia is the, uh, the reigning back-to-back -back MVP in the women's division. Uh, she's the floor general of the five-time champion Kitimat Heisler Senior Women's Team. They're currently in the midst of a three-peat. Uh, they won in 2018, 2019, and 2020. So, of course, we were scheduled to be meeting up in Prince Rupert next week uh, for the annual All Native Gathering. But, of course, because of the pandemic and the situation throughout the world, uh, the tournament has been cancelled for what I believe is the first time in 61 years. So at CFNR, we decided to be great uh, to reach out to everybody, see how they're doing, and just kind of talk about what this means to them. So, Adelia, before we get into basketball, um, I know that you, just after last year's tournament, graduated uh, from your nursing program and uh, are now a registered nurse. So before we talk about basketball, how are you doing and how, is, uh, how has life been for you during the pandemic? No, well, first of all, thank you for reaching out to me and inviting me to this. Um, I always want to talk about basketball and uh, All Native has been a huge tournament for everybody to look forward to. So anything we kind of fill in that void. I mean, I look forward to listening to other players and other people you guys speak to about uh, next week. Um, yeah, so last year after All Native, I quickly had to come back down to Vancouver and go through my graduation ceremony. So it was like a celebration at home for winning and then celebration for finishing uh, my bachelor in nursing. And I was very excited to obviously start my career but little did I know that I would be entering in a pandemic and it's it's honestly something you don't expect and it's pretty taxing, but um, there's a few senior nurses that I kind of look up to and try uh, really learn from them and pick up what I can to kind of get through. And I ended up picking it full time. So it's, it's quite busy. It's um, quite a schedule and yeah, I definitely would have been using next week to kind of re-energize and go back to work. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have that. Yeah, no, it's been, a, it's been a crazy 10 months since last year's tournament. It almost feels like that wasn't even 2020. It feels like it's so long ago. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's, let's get into basketball then. So I'm glad you're doing well. Obviously, uh, yeah, working um, in, uh, in New West at the, at the Royal Columbian Hospital. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so in December, the All-Native... Uh, made the official announcement that the turn of 2021 tournament has been canceled. I think everybody kind of knew that was going to be uh, the reality, but when it got announced, uh, your response, what were your first thoughts around the cancellation of the tournament? I was kind of mixed feelings. I mean, I was pretty focused on work over like, since I started um, being a new nurse, like you really want to come out there with your top game and um that was that was my main thing and when I heard about the all native being cancelled um I thought it was obviously the right call considering what I see on in Royal Columbian Hospital uh, in terms of COVID um just to protect our communities like we have all natives a huge place for people to gather and you know you see everybody from different villages let alone our elders that come out so it's it's it was the right call to cancel but now as like knowing that it should have been next week um it's pretty heartbreaking too it's um so no I used to say that All Native would, will always be there. It'll always be there. We can always go back. So for it to be canceled, it's like, it's pretty shocking. Was it something like normally when you get ready for the All Native, um, like I'm not sure what your preparation is, you know, getting ready for that tournament. So what would you normally have been doing, I guess, kind of on the basketball front, getting ready for the tournament? Yeah, I would be in the gym a lot more. Um, usually a week before we kind of tone it down to kind of let our bodies rest. Um, that's our instructions from our coach. Um, we usually go <clears throat> pretty hard with our training in the last month. And um, we finally have a little bit of an ease going into the all native tournament. And we'll usually have like a breakfast together or uh, some kind of team get together to kind of get on the same page and talk about how excited we are. And um, yeah, just uh, everybody telling each other when we're leaving, when we're going to be there, opening ceremonies, like, yeah. 
So it's uh, yeah. Well, it's definitely not normal, I think. So if you think about uh, everyone back uh, back in Kitimat, uh, back in the community, and of course, you know, the, the gyms have been closed or they've been on very limited uh, schedules. And I think, you know, it, it's really hitting home in the communities and a lot of communities are in a lockdown. So what do you think um, that's like there? Like, I've, you've been talking to your teammates and I, I mean, even yourself not being able to play basketball where you're living. How, just that in itself. Like, I don't think we've ever been here before where people can't play basketball. So what, do you, what are your thoughts about how that's affecting everybody back home? It's definitely taking an impact on, I know for our team and I'm sure uh, for other teams as well, because basketball is usually like a big uh, part of the community where it can kind of bring our entire community together, not just a couple of people. So um, we usually do that with like fundraisers and stuff. But um, it's been pretty quiet and I know our team, we try to come up with little ways to kind of compete with each other. So just this uh, last month we did who could burn the most calories and uh, you keep track of it and then we post it and we have a little pot of money to <laughs> give away at the end. So um, we're just trying to be creative and stay connected. I mean, it's pretty hard to... Um, pretty hard when we don't have our main place of coming together which is the gym so yeah maybe just to stay on that subject for a second here so like we're on the short and long-term effects of this i mean no basketball i mean there's obviously the the practice aspect of it there's keeping in shape there's also the big social element for element for everybody so what do you think the impacts will be like uh, of this you know in terms of like short-term long-term effects do you think there'll be any impacts or do you think it'll just be back to usual next year I think it'll be a lot more exciting to see everybody again, um, like coming together and seeing uh, friends and family from a different community and just knowing, knowing that they're there and making it through the pandemic as well. And they've like keeping everybody safe. I think that's, that's the most top priority is everybody's safety right now. So I think once everybody makes it through that and then we come together again, it's just going to be that much more exciting. <laughs> Yeah, I think the pent up energy is going to be something something to see next year. <laughs> but I guess now that we've uh, you know we've we, I think everyone's come to reality that we're not going to be there and and get to do the normal things. But what are you going to miss the most? Uh, there's a few things that come to mind. I think the opening ceremonies is something I always look forward to. Um, the drumming and the singing is is um, something I usually really make time for. Um, and it's, it kind of like really grounds, grounds me and to hear all the drumming and singing. So I, re I'm going to miss that. Um, I usually rewatch, um, a few of them and I've seen that you guys posted one from a couple of years ago. So, um, I'm definitely going to miss that piece. Um, playing obviously, um, I, I was obviously looking forward to trying to go for a fourth. So <laughs> um, I'm going to miss playing for that. And uh, just being with my teammates, uh, there's a few that I'll go watch a few games with uh, near the end of the week just to just to hang out and watch a good game together. So um, seeing my family from different communities, uh, usually my a few grandparents and uncles and aunties from Bella Bella. Uh, I usually meet up with there. My grandma usually has her own table right in the corner where she, where she sells food and um, little stuff like that. Uh, I'll definitely miss. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's really heartbreaking to, <laughs> to think of how much we're we're gonna miss out. Yeah. But let's go back to uh, let's go back to last year's tournament. So 2020, uh, Kinemat really dominated the tournament. It felt like you guys were just, uh, you know, a force to be reckoned with and weren't going to be stopped this last year, the three-peat. So looking at the, the history books of the All-Native, um, you know, it's only been done once in the history of the women's division. Uh, so I think it was Melikela did that in 97 to 99. There's been um, a number of teams that are repeated. Uh, so, you know, this, this journey towards the three-peat is not, is not necessarily new, uh, but you guys were the first, time, the first team to pull it off. So let's go back to the, that tournament. How? What's your thoughts on last year's tournament, just in general? Uh, well, what I think about is 
the the huge break we had from our first game to our second game that was too long of a break but uh, oh. we were able to overcome that um yeah, I know the, the ladies division is starting to amp up in terms of competition now. Um, we have players going away for college and then coming back and bringing that skill set with them. And it just makes the tournament that much more fun um, to play in. And uh, yeah, we, we had to make a few changes as a team to kind of continue on with our streak. And that was our main focus of ways to improve because we know that uh, teams are smart enough to kind of figure out ways to stop us. And we could tell this year um, that it was more challenging and it kind of made things a little more rewarding to come out with a win at the end. Yeah, and I think your, I mean, your, your name notoriety is there. I mean, when people talk about women's basketball and kid and Matt team, I mean, Adelia Paul is uh, is very, uh, it's it's very common that we that we go there, and I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the things that you've done on the court. I mean, you know, never mind at the All Native, but Douglas College, uh, you've had that, you know, that experience. How does uh, you know that college experience uh, affect the All Native, and how has it affected your game over the years? Uh, I think basketball IQ, I think I really uh, flourished a bit more as a point guard at Douglas College. I mean, I've had to work with so many extremely good players where I was able to create and they were able to finish. So um, it was really fun in, in that term to uh, play at Douglas as well as like you were in the gym like five to six out of seven days a week and uh, it's a, it was a dream for me to do that and to actually have done it. It was it was pretty amazing, and I would do it again. Um, I'd definitely do it again. And there's actually some some girls there now from the north: uh, Jennifer Nice, uh, Christy Innes, and uh, Cara Lee plays for Vancouver down here. So there's there's some girls. Um, following those those college basketball and they come back and play and you could tell that they're that they're at that level. Yeah, so I think the other thing interesting about the you know the the three peat is that I mean there's always rivalries that we that have uh, built over the years in the women's division. And you know it's you guys against Malakatla, uh, you guys against Hazelton. Um, so maybe speak a little bit about the, the rivalry. Like how, how does that fit into getting you guys ready for the next year's tournament? Like, were you guys ready for Hazleton again this year? Like, is there talk about that? Yeah. Uh, I remember being quite nervous against our first game. I don't know why. I just remember being in the gym and coach Keith came up to me and he's like, what's going on? He's like, you're okay. Like, it's just another game and trying to get my head into it. So, um, I, we're always looking at the draw as soon as it comes out and kind of see where things could go, but we try to take it one game at a time. Um, but we always know that we're going to have those uh, teams like Hazleton, uh, Rupert, or uh, Silks now that we kind of meet up with and compete and uh, really have to fight for a win. So, uh, yeah, there's definitely some rivalries. Uh, we kind of keep an eye on who's coming in for them, like new players or who is not playing anymore and try to scale it out as best as we can. But um, yeah, no, Hazleton put up a good fight. Uh, they took the win the first game. And um, I remember coming into the finals knowing that we had to be a lot more aggressive. Uh, we were uh, a little more letting them play their game and um in the finals yeah that was the main thing i was trying to voice is that we had to be more aggressive as a team and not just one two players from our team so so yeah looking at the kinemat women's team i mean you've uh, you've been a mainstay for for a number of years now but it's, i mean the program itself you know you go back to the history books you know it shows five championships going back to 2000 uh next one in 2011 uh, is there any of the women from back in that era that are now still involved in, you know, what now is built out in, built into a powerhouse program of women's basketball in Kitimat? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We still have a few senior basketball players, I guess they'll call them. Uh, Deanna Smith, Crystal, Deanna. Um, they've been there and they really, 
they really know how to commit to the team and kind of show us how it's done. Um, yeah, they still, they're all pretty, have a huge impact on playing um, with our team. And uh, they were, they were playing back then in those championships too. And I remember watching them as a kid. So uh, I remember definitely looking up to them and <clears throat> playing them like our junior girls used to play our senior women around that time and they used to take it to us hard and I'm pretty sure they'll laugh because they know they know how it was back then um but yeah they're definitely it's still a huge part of our team and kind of guide us um have guided us over the years and continue to with uh, some new players that are coming in and we're trying to like kind of groom them I guess to to bring them with us. Yeah, and I guess I implied that a little bit that you know that that their, that a program is developed. So now you're you're now the you know the stars of the team. And um, how's that dynamic work with like the junior the, with the girls junior program and kind of how that dynamic works? Yeah, so um, we have some of the junior girls that join us for practices. They they're always out there at the gym, anyways, ready to go. So we kind of. Uh, call them onto the floor they just hop on the floor with us during practice time um or they come out and train with us for runs and um we're just trying to close that gap of okay if some players can't play then we have some players coming in that could kind of keep the program going so um our coach is really smart with that um he kind of predicts what we need, um, what worked, what we need next. And then moving forward, we could really apply that. So uh, the program is uh, very strong in that sense. And with with that, um, I mean, it kind of, I guess it shows at the tournament how well it works. Yeah, and another thing that's interesting when it comes to the championships is that when people go home to the communities, normally everyone else outside of that community don't necessarily get to see what they, what, it, what it means to win a championship, you know, and what that means to go home with the banner and you know and have the community embrace you like that. Um, what does that mean to you? And uh, and what was it like last year after uh, after the championship? Gee, you're making me miss home now. <laughs> Going home, uh, I couldn't go home this past year because I had to come down. But um, usually what happens is that we all go home, we have the banner, we kind of drive through the, the community with our banner and everybody honking. And uh, we meet at the gym for a celebration dinner. And uh, the whole community is there. And um, they kind of just celebrate our win. And it's, it's something that our entire community looks forward to. And it's um, it's just something positive that brings the community together. So it's, it's a lot more than just basketball because they are the people that kind of support us throughout the season to go and make, uh, make it pay off for us. So, and it also like they're in the stands and they're always in our corner and right behind us. Um, everybody dressed in blue, so it's it's pretty powerful. Yeah, and I think anybody that hasn't witnessed it, I mean, it is. The, the Kinemat fans, are uh, they have a reputation at the All-Native, and it is that they're passionate and they're always <laughs> yeah. there. You know, and I think that sea of blue is something that yeah. um, we've gotten accustomed to seeing over the years. Yeah. So, so, yeah, ideally, just kind of... Um, I mean, you know, we wanted to check in on how you're doing, but there's also a fun time to talk about just, um, you know, some ask you some rapid fire questions about, um, you know, your thoughts on basketball. So it's more around about players and the tournament itself. So you probably have tons of really good memories of the all native. What's your favorite memory of the all native tournament? If, if you have one. Favorite memory. Okay. Um, I think just going as a kid, um, my, my, I either went with my mom or my grandma and I started off by running around the gym. Like you always see kids running around now and that was me. And every so often I'd come poke my head in the gym and eventually uh, watch a few games. But um, I was there to have just uh, with my, my family and kind of um, taking in all the people. Um, 
Another favorite memory of mine was uh, knowing that I could really compete at All Native. Um, I think that came the year maybe 2010, 2011. And we played Metla Katla. And there was this girl that I remember playing, this older lady, and she was really fast and really skilled. And um, that's when I kind of learned to scout a player. And my coach said, okay, watch for her to do this. Then mm. you could do this. And it was just a little jab where she did uh, left or right. And then she would go one way and then I was able to block her. So that was, that's one memory that I, I really remember is knowing that I can compete. We lost the game, but it was, it was um, a memor- memorable game for me. Yeah, so maybe you know, on that subject a bit, um, growing up uh, around the tournament, especially as a younger player, who did you look up to, uh, you know, as you watched, uh, you know, the women's division blossom? Yeah, um, I was thinking about this and I had to reach out to them uh, to see if it was okay to kind of bring up their name because um, for the most part, they don't know. They don't know that I've, I've had my eye on them. Uh, growing up or as I played Um, but Natalie Stewart is from our community and I've watched her from like as a young at a young age and the way she uh, was able to put in the hard work and she is so determined and just very skilled and she stood out uh, amongst her her team of how how good she was and I wanted to be like that I wanted to be like her and I looked up to her for four years and um yeah I, I, I had to reach out to her today and let her know um another one was um uh, D Deanna Smith so even today like I really love uh, just sitting down and talking basketball with her and um, still in practices, like we're at the free throw line, we're doing free throws and she doesn't miss at all, like, at all. So it's, um, I have fun trying to bug her and trying to make her miss it, but uh, just how skilled she is and how uh, she's still quite impactful in the game. And we really need her and use her uh, throughout the entire game, throughout the entire tournament. And um, I just think, uh, her passion for the game is something I really resonate with. So, um, and the last one, um, she's from Greenville. Her name's Pam, and I'm not sure what her last name is, but I remember as a kid, like when I mentioned how I'd peek into the gym, uh, a game was going on and I watched her and she was quite dominant. Uh, she's a tall player, a center, center position but uh, she just stood out to me and I don't know why I just uh, enjoyed watching her game yeah well, I guess shout out to Natalie D and uh, and Pam who didn't know the, the answer to this question but I think it's really it's really insightful and really cool for her to hear it because you know, we're checking with the MVPs you guys have blossomed into these amazing players so it's interesting where you got that influence from um, maybe on a kind of a similar question, but you know all these rivalries that you've uh, you've endured the last few years, going up against uh, you know great players. Um, do you have a favorite rival? Is there someone you just love going up against that just gets your motor running and you get geared up for every year? Is there a player or two out there that uh, that you look forward to going up against? Uh, yeah, we Rupert's usually like a rivalry team where we really really. Uh, play hard let's just say that we play hard and I uh, usually match up with Natalie Harris and she's quite aggressive on defense and she's quick so guarding her is uh, kind of difficult for me too um, she's fast she's smart and uh, it's it's definitely a battle but it's um, it's a good one to play against and kind of feel like whether we win or lose, like that was a good game. And um, yeah, that's the only one that comes to mind when you say it like that, so. Great. Okay, so the, uh, really the last question is, is around, um, you know, just a reflection on yourself. And, uh, you know, you're, like we said, we have a lot of respect for you as a player. The fans love to watch you play. What do you believe your lasting impact on the tournament is, you know, on the court as, as you know, as the MVP in the women's division, the reigning MVP? Um, what's your lasting impact on the tournament, in your opinion? 
Uh, can you explain that? Well, just how, how how you want how you want people to to know to remember how you play ball. I mean, like this year there's no basketball, so we're trying to. It's like a time to reflect, I guess. It seems it seems yeah. really weird to even ask this because I it's something I would probably <laughs> ask you in retirement. So I know you're not retired, but it's just around. Yeah, like what do you think about your lasting impact on the game? Um, I. I usually do camps, so that's coming to mind. I, I like to give back with basketball, with what it's given me. So um, there's kids I usually see at the All Native, and I buy a basketball every year um, just to have on my own. But at the end of the tournament, I kind of see, okay, which kid was here that I know that um, I've done a basketball camp with, and I'll... I'll call them over and I'll give it to them. So I think um, giving back to the game is where um, where I'm at with that now. Uh, it's not really about me anymore. It's it's time to look at who's coming up next. So. Is there uh, is there coaching in your future at all? I know that you were an assistant coach with Douglas College, or I'm not sure if you still are. Is that something that you have a passion for? Eventually, yes. Um, I had my own little program up north, but that was for a couple of years happening, but after COVID it kind of stopped and uh, I've just been focusing on transitioning into the professional side of my career. And um, that's been difficult. So I had to kind of step away from basketball recently. And, but um, as soon as like the opportunity arises, I'm sure I'll get back into it and start uh, bringing back camps when I can. Yeah, I'm sure everyone's really looking forward to, to those days and in the very near future. So just in uh, final remarks, Adelia, um, shout out to anybody. Anybody want to send, a, you know, send some best wishes out um, during yeah. All Native Week? Uh, yeah, no, just uh, keep staying safe to everybody from all, all communities. Um, eventually, we'll get through this and hopefully we'll be meeting in 2022 which is a long ways away, but um, time's been flying so far. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to my family back home in my community. Um, I know it's been some hard times, so I'm just uh, wishing some prayers and positive vibes to everybody back home. And uh, my nieces and nephews, I really miss them. So um, huge shout out to them. All right. Well, thank you so much, Adelia, for spending some time with us uh, this morning and uh, wish you all the best uh, in, in the very near future. Yeah, thank you.